So um, because Nusinersen has been approved for longer and has a uh, wider age range to which it applies, um, there have been many patients that have been uh, treated over time. And um, uh, we, it turns out, may have another uh, medication to add to our list in addition to Zolgensma and Spinraza, we may be soon adding Rizdaplam. So this is a medication that's been submitted but not yet approved uh, by the FDA for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy. It's unique in that it's an oral agent and it acts on the SMN2 gene impacting the gene's ability to produce full-length protein. So I'd like to review some of the studies here as well. John, the Firefish clinical trial evaluated Rizdaplam in patients with type 1 SMA. Six out of 14 infants were able to sit, including three who achieved unassisted sitting after eight months of treatment. 57% achieved a score of 40 or above on the CHOP and 10 at their eight-month visit. Can you review the significance of a score of greater than 40 on the CHOP and 10 for this population and why that might be meaningful? From the original natural history studies done in type 1 SMA, mm -hmm. um, as Nancy mentioned earlier, the natural mm -hmm. history is relentless loss. That's really quite rapid in the most severe onset form of this mm -hmm. disease. And so it's been taken as a gospel in the community that generally in the natural history, people with type 1 or infantile onset SMA do not go above 40 with their CHOP in 10 score. Um, there is very rare exceptions to that um, when you first meet the patient, but certainly in the natural history, they would very rapidly drop below that score. And so these um, uh, studies tend to show that 40 cutoff as a landmark above which um, if you're seeing gains to higher scores, you're clearly having a therapeutic impact compared to the natural history of SMA. Um, the challenge with the Firefish study is that it is a newer study, it's still ongoing, and every time we hear data, it's been longer on treatment. Um, but some things to remember about this cohort are that um, they were in general a bit more symptomatic with SMA than some of the other studies that were um, done. Uh, their mean age at first dose was 6.7 months in the original cohort. Um, so some of these patients had been living with symptomatic inf uh, SMA as infants for a, a good few months um, before they started treatment. And to see these gains still in that cohort um, is, is remarkable. Um, the other challenge is this is all open label data. There's no placebo control group. So when you're starting to look at the adverse events, um, some of them are really quite commonly reported in the cohort. There's about half with fever, um, diarrhea and vomiting about a third. Um, and uh, so they look like they have a high prevalence of adverse events, but those who do SMA research understand that these symptomatic infants have a high incidence of adverse events in general. And so um, we really need that placebo controlled data to be able to be more clear about how different an intervention is to um, the natural history of the disease. Um, but another um, encouraging thing besides just the motor function aspect um, in these patients is that uh, no patient in the original cohort of 21 um, proceeded to needing permanent ventilation and there was no loss of swallowing ability in any of the patients. They remained able to feed at least partially orally. Um, and at the time of the last date of presentation, 18 out of the 21 were still living. Uh, so this is um, encouraging that even with uh, over a year and a half of follow-up after initiation of treatment in quite symptomatic infants, um, they're alive, not needing permanent ventilation, swallowing and making um, motor gains.